So we're now heading into the cellar here at Takara. We're going to the cellar. You get a chance to see a little bit more. So here we are going to the cellar. This is going to make some time for us uh -huh. so that we can just take a tour of the cellar, a quick tour, just a little walkthrough. Um, yeah, like I said, she's one of my favorite people in the world. Hi. How are you? Thanks so much for seeing me. No again. Worries. This is Hello. Jay Hello. Cameron. Nice to meet you. You don't Hello. mind the camera in your face, do you? It's a bit quiet now. Everybody's gone on lunch. <laughs> so, well, soon. Um, oh, wow. So, welcome to Takara. Um, this is where all the magic happens. We have quite a functional modern cellar as you can see. So we process all our grapes on top of uh, our reds and our reds all just um, we try not to use too many pumps or mechanisms um, and so basically it all flows from the top all the way into the bottom for these tanks. So these are our red fermenters. Um, this is they stay on the skins for about seven to ten days and then um, we press them into tank or into barrel. And so do you guys have like a hydraulic machine that does the push downs or, or do you guys do so those manually? Manual. Oh, they yeah. are manual. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, so we do punch downs and pump overs mm -hmm. and that's all quite manual. Um, especially the caps, the caps, caps get extremely hard. <laughs> so Ooh, they, uh, yes. So high complementation is quite tough. I worked harvest one time and I was like, man, I'm going to be so skinny by the time yeah. this is over. <laughs> yeah. It's hard work. It is a lot of hard work. People think it's so glamorous. And then these are white wine tanks at the back and then our white wine barrel cellar as well. Um, all our premium wines go into tank and all our reserve wines go into barrel. At the moment, what we're busy with is um, our red wines do a secondary fermentation called malolactic fermentation. And currently, these wines are all done with malolactic fermentation. So now we're racking them off the lees. We're taking them down into the red wine barrel cellar, and then we're replacing them back into the same barrel. So are they painting that barrel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it looks really nice. I'll take it down, and you can. Do they it. paint it with wine, or do they paint it's it with candid. actual paint? Oh yeah. wow! It's nice. That's the sign of its color. Yeah, basically. Do you buy the tannins from the grocery store? Or do you just use the tannins from the wine? Um, I mean, yeah. from the nursery, not no. from the grocery store, but like, <laughs> yeah, yeah we, be... we buy it. We okay. Buy it. In fact, we add a little bit of water and then we paint the barrels. Oh, because I'm actually thinking about. Okay, so this is our barrel stacking over here. You can see we put all the nice new painted barrels in front, it just looks really nice. It does look really nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so these are batches that are now done and finished with a secondary fermentation. They are now good, better, and safe. Uh, we'll just rack them one more time later in the year before we do our final blends of them. We like to keep our batches separate so that we know exactly what we add and then we can really blend it according to what we're feeling or the taste of it. Um, so we feel it's very important to make sure that we get the best wines and the best batches into our reserve wines and that's why we do this. When we do our blending we taste um, barrel for barrel just to make sure that everything is sorted when we get the best wines into our bottle. So usually at the end of the year you'll see that this is all full of barrels. <laughs> at the moment we still drink them down. I love the smell. Yeah. We have, um, so this is similar to the Solera system, but not really. So our oldest barrel that we have is 2001. Um, and when we blend our brandy, we use different vintages and we blend it together. So um, I think it's a 20 year old brandy that we have. It's just one, um, a gold award 
as well. So we're pretty proud of that. And it's doing really well. It's quite a smooth brand. I don't know if you've tasted it before. And we tasted the XO right now. So I'm, yeah. that's probably the yeah, one that we tasted. Exactly. It was nice. We, I loved it a lot. Yeah, it's very sweet. And I'm super proud that South Africa was just voted number one brandy in the world. Exactly. Yes. Very awesome. So this will be my first time distilling with this pot come June. I'm really yeah. excited. Oh, so like you're the distiller as well. Like, yeah. oh, I'm nice. Really distilling it as well. Oh, that's super exciting. Yeah. Uh, I got to get a bottle of that one just so I can be like, hey, this is D and A is in this one. Yeah. Nice. It's a beautiful pot. Though. It is beautiful. <laughs> Candice, thank you so much. Oh, no problem. I'm sorry if it's so short. No, it's always, <laughs> no, this is perfect. It's always great to see you. Definitely. I hope to see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks thank so you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Pampa Mio. Pampa Mio. Pampa Mio. Pepelebo. Pepelebo. Well, hello? Hello? Where? <laughs> Good to see you. How you feeling? Last time I saw you, it got it. Hello, everybody. If we can continue to find a way to bridge our differences and, you know, really, really, really come together, come to Africa, a lot of people really want to come here. This trip is not only a trip, but it really is an experience, and it's a learning experience. We've already learned so much just at the table, so I'm excited to be here, I'm, I'm glad to be here, and I can't wait to continue to learn and just be with all of y'all. I quite didn't want to come to Africa, okay? And when I came, I got here, they were so kind. And I like, oh my gracious, then I got to meet you guys, and y'all started telling me about the trip. And I said, okay, this is gonna be fun. So now, I'm kind of excited. My wife, my wife said, well, you ain't got no excitement, but now I'm looking forward. So, hey, I'm hoping one day I can have the same testimony as you guys, and I'm just glad to be here. our second Maximum Impact experience. And I've been singing your praises, Jay, hands down. If you want to go to Africa, you got to do it with Jay. There's no other way, no other way. And to be honest with you, when Renee, Jeff, James signed up for this, I'm like, we can't let y'all go without us. <laughs> and so here we are. It's just the most interesting thing in the world to come to a place such as this. It's beautiful. I mean, this is a beautiful resort. Uh, you all seem like very wonderful people. We all have something in common. We're all connected. Mm -hmm. You know, we all are connected. Um, this is my second trip with Maximum Impact. I was in Ghana, July last year. And I brought my daughters with me. And they had a pretty rough experience because they had a lot of expectations that weren't realistic. But it took them two weeks to decompress and then to understand fully the magic that had happened on that trip. This is my mom, Claudette. And I'm very grateful that she brought me here. This is her first trip with the group, but she's been um, to Africa like three times. <laughs> and again, I'm very grateful that she brought me here. This is my second trip, and I'm gonna have a third, a fourth, and a fifth. And I tell you, I'm still excited about all the things that I'm experiencing. And you would think, I've been to many countries, I've traveled a lot, but I've never been to a country where people look like me. Everywhere I went, I always had to fit in. And that, you know, was kind of traumatic for me after coming here and receiving, being received the way I was. I'm just looking forward to the whole itinerary. You know, it looks really, uh, I know, it's really well organized and I'm looking forward to the whole thing. So, glad to meet everybody and look forward to meeting in person and talking. Hi, my name is LaDonia. Um, these are my parents and I'm really excited to be here. I'm 21 years old and thank you for hosting this trip and bringing us all here. Hi, I'm Faith Benson Lettle. These are my parents. Um, I'm from Akron as well. This is my college graduation gift. So. We 
grandkids. I got 18 grandkids and, and nine great grandkids. And all of them want to come. Because I was so excited, thanks to Jay, I was so, uh, look, I walked through the streets of Philadelphia lifting up, <laughs> up Africa. You got to go. I said, if you're Afro-American, you write that down on whatever form, you need to go to Africa. Travel a lot, and over the last couple years, I really wanted to do a deep discovery of Africa, all the African countries, and I found Jay, and I said, that's the way I want to do it. So we we're very, very uh, appreciative. This is my sister Linda, and the reason I'm here is because Linda spoke so highly of the trip she was on in Ghana. Coming to Africa, I liked it. It's something different. You can connect. Connecting with the people here, connecting with the workers here, I like that idea and that approach. So I wanted to come and see for myself. I remember it was November 2020 when Mr. J. Cameron visited us. It, it was during COVID pandemic. Imagine we have 32 rooms, but he was accommodating only one guest who was J. Cameron. <laughs> Then Jay Cameron told me, I promise you, I'll bring you a group. Oh, well. okay. <laughs> so, on behalf of Air 40 Planet Lodge, we are here to express our sincere gratitude to host you here today. I can't imagine doing Africa without, without um, being on a Maximum Impact Tour, because being with a group like this just adds so much more to it. Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we're gonna Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on our children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do, and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation. And they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora, as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa, and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny. <laughs>